Hi folks, Mickey Mouse Corners. Let's show three different ways we can model and design Mickey Mouse Corners when you're machining parts and making fixtures. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So what are Mickey Mouse Corners? When you're trying to machine a sharp inside corner for relief, we have a problem. A round tool, let's pretend this blue circle is our tool, can't machine a sharp inside square corner. So what we've machined is called Mickey Mouse Corners, also called dog bones, other names for them. The first way I call quick and dirty, it's just that. Hit C on your keyboard. I'm going to pick this plane right here with the left mouse click. And I'm gonna move my mouse over till it snaps into the corner. I'll drag my mouse out and say 3 8 of an inch. I chose 0.375 for two reasons. One, I need it to be larger than the tool that I'm going to machine with. That, in this case, let's say I was using a quarter inch tool. You don't wanna fully engage or load the tool up when you come in here. But also, the second reason, which I'll show you after we extrude it. Hit E for extrude, click on it. Now, instead of typing in a dimension, move up here to your extent, change it to two object. I struggled with this for a while, so I realized you can't click planes, you need to click points. If you click that little point right there, we get a parametric extrude two, click okay. We've now got a quick and dirty Mickey Mouse ear. The other reason that we've got to make that a larger diameter is if we hit I on our keyboard, I click this point, in that point, you can see that that opening right there is only 265. So it's actually gonna be pretty tight for a quarter inch tool to get through the opening. Yes, it will work as a Mickey Mouse corner. As you can see, there's plenty of relief around the sharp, uh, the, the bottom left edge. The other thing I like about this is if you're going to use a drill and poke it out, again, makes it pretty easy to do. And in that situation, if you drill this hole first, you wouldn't even have to come in here with an end mill and machine it out. But it's also the less elegant one. Now debatable, which of the next two are better? This is a really good method though, and it's one that we used in our Wednesday widget when we were showing making the KTM motorcycle part. To start off, L for line. Click on my face. I'm gonna sketch a line straight down. Notice we've got that Ike guy right there, which is the same as the horizontal vertical. So that line is locked. I actually can drag it up and down, but it's locked in place vertically. C for circle, just somewhere over here, I'm gonna sketch a 0.25 inch circle. Actually, you know what, we'll make it a little bit bigger, 0.265. Tangent, and after I click tangent, I'll click on the circle first, and then I'll click on this line so I've got a 265 circle that I can move up and down along that line. I could say coincident, the center point of the circle, I want to be coincident with this line. But what I don't like about that is it, it technically gets rid of our Mickey Mouse corner, but we've still got this issue where the radius starts to form right at the point. And I think that's not a super reliable process. So what I wanna do is push that circle down a little. So instead I'll hit D for dimension, I'll click the center point of the circle, I'll click the line, and we'll just we'll say 0.01, 10 thou. I'll make it a little bit more, easier to see, 50 thou. When I go to hit E for extrude, I'm gonna click two different things. One is this, the second I need to click that little sliver there. Same thing, I'll change the extent from distance to two object, orbit around, and I'll click that point, click OK. Now we've got a problem, we've got this sort of gnarly sharp corner, no big deal. S for keyboard shortcut, F, I, L for fillet. If you don't know which one it is, just take a look at the icon. That's a sketch fillet. You can see the little black line, the sketch. This is a solid model fillet, which is what I want here. Click on that. I'll click on the line, the sharp edge there, and say 0.05. Boom, you're done. This actually works really well as a Mickey Mouse corner, and it's something I've seen a lot that's done in industry. So again, if you drag a box around here, you can see we're not going to have any interference with our part. 
The last way, which I don't know why, it is my favorite though. It looks like it takes a little bit more work. Let's walk through it. L for line, click on my plane. I'm gonna let it, the line start in that corner right there. See how it snaps? Just drag it up, hit escape. D for dimension. I want this line and this edge here to be 45 degrees apart. Now I don't want this line for the what we're doing. I just want it as a construction line. So click on it once. I hit X, but you can also click normal construction. C for circle. I'm going to click. In this case, I will let it snap to the line. Sometimes I like to click that up here, create it, and then say coincident. The center dot of the circle to the line. We'll do it on the line this time, though. C for circle, I get the snap point. And we'll say again, 265, just a hair oversized from our quarter inch tool. So the idea here is I've got a tool or a circle that I can sh show just how little of a Mickey Mouse I need to create to clear the corner, the corner being that point right there. So I don't need to go all the way down here, kind of like we did in our quick and dirty. I can go really right there. Now the same thing where I could say I want coincident, circumference of the circle with that. But that's the problem too, where you've actually got the slight issue of, of a sort of tangency between the two, not a very reliable way to do it. Fusion luckily just came out with a new dimension that helps us do this. I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard. Now before I click anything, right click and change, pick circle or arc tangent. So that's gonna drive this dimension off the outside of the circle relative to that point, which I'll click on second, which is exactly what I want, and we'll say 0.01, enter. A lot easier, in my opinion, of doing that than the old way, which we had to click from here to there, which is gonna tell me it's over constrained here, obviously. So that's a great method. E for extrude, click our shape, to object, click there, click okay. I would also still recommend SFIL, adding some fillets just to avoid edge breaks. 0.02 is plenty or 0.025, won't look bad at all. And that's, a, I think, a cool way because you're gonna spend less time machining. You're gonna create a smaller fillet, a smaller fillet as, as practical or as needed. And you're gonna have less, in some cases, less material removal, potentially more strength to your fixture. That's all a good thing. If you notice, by the way, that my fusion was behaving just a little bit different than yours during this video, go to your name, preferences, and under design, I have turned off two things, auto look at sketch and auto project geometry on active sketch plane. What are those two things? Auto look at sketch is changes the fact that when I now hit C for circle and I click on this sketch, Notice how it doesn't automatically do what's called orient the model normal to the sketch plane. I don't always like that, I'll show you. If I'm trying to look in here to nook and cranny and start a sketch, and I have that turned back on. See for circle, click here. Oops, stop sketch. There you go. It moves, moves you around. That can be really disorienting sometimes when you're trying to understand and follow some design details. The other option, is auto project geometry on active sketch plane. This is a, uh, I don't like this because I like using the project command when I want it. Let's give you an example. Let's create some circles in this, in a rectangle too, and I'll extrude these out. So we've got some shapes and geometry. I've turned auto project back on. Now let's say I hit C for circle and I click on the same face. Now let's say I wanna do some work right here. Well, you don't know it, but Fusion has automatically taken the liberty or luxury of automatically projecting the, some of the information in the geometry of these shapes. And that does seem helpful, but I find it can be disorienting or frustrating because let's say I wanna create a circle that's a little bit offset from this one for some reason. Well, it tries to snap it to there. My preference is, undo that, 
turn that setting back off. C for circle, click on the plane. You know, the problem now is it doesn't snap center to it. But for me, again, that's normally okay. And if I want the center of that circle, I'll hit P for project, I'll click on that, and now I've got visible sketch geometry that shows me what exactly I'm doing. Folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care, see you next Friday.